Uh, book 84 of 2019 was Darkness Visible by William uh, Styron. <coughs> it's in a bit of a weird binding because it's a library book, but this is um, the book here. Um, it's essentially a first person kind of perspective on depression. Um, it was actually quite good because um, he starts off kind of talking about a person that he used to know who had depression and how initially he was i'm gonna put this book down actually because it's quite big <laughs> like that you know what it looks like um he was saying initially how he didn't really have any empathy for this person who had depression and i think it's quite an interesting comment to make because i think unless you have experienced depression yourself it's very very difficult to understand what it is and what it feels like um when i talk to people who haven't had depression before they just don't seem to get it they just don't seem to understand like that it's not something that you can just you know snap yourself out of like it's not that easy to do like a lot of people are like oh you know it's people feeling sorry for themselves or whatever it's like it's not <laughs> trust me it's not um and the fact that people say things like that just makes it worse because you then kind of when you are feeling like, like that you start to beat yourself up because you're like am i am i creating this problem am i making myself feel like this like should i not be feeling like this and you kind of end up just you know making the situation worse really um what was kind of really nice about this book was that um, Styron actually says as well how depression manifests differently in different people. I think there's this kind of like assumption that, that depression is like a set of symptoms and that you could recognise it and that you know someone who's got it. So, for example, people can't leave the, their bed and they don't like, you know, take care of themselves and things like that. And it's like you can have people who are very high functioning that you wouldn't even be able to tell that they were depressed. Like they literally hide it so well. And that, you know, people who are like really happy all the time outwardly and not inside and so depression is not something that you can like identify in a lot of people um because people hide it well because they know the stigma that's attached to it so there's a lot of people that that have kind of like negative thoughts and and kind of are dealing with mental health issues a lot of the time that you probably won't even be aware of or it might come out in like odd ways so it's funny because the this guy kind of gives like um examples of situations that have happened to him where he's just behaved really oddly um and it, it was interesting because i recognize people's odd behavior because i've been there and i've been that odd person so for example when i've been feeling very anxious about things situations whatever um and my mental health hasn't been great i've been a little bit weird so i've been like not been able to kind of express myself very well or I've been a bit kind of standoffish or a little bit like I haven't given people a lot of eye contact and stuff but that's how it manifests in me like so when other people are being a little bit off and a little bit kind of rude I kind of think oh maybe their mental health is quite bad at the minute and, and kind of give them a little bit of, of uh, you know leeway in, in how they behave and I'll just see what they're like the next time before I kind of make a judgment on that person because I recognize that I'm affected sometimes by my mental health so other people likely are as well and it's it's interesting because I've met a lot of people recently that have anxiety and they've said like how um like it affects them and they when I first met these people I thought they were a bit odd <laughs> so it kind of like it is like if you think someone's a bit odd it's usually because it's mental health issues really um because it manifests differently in different people and and you can't say that everyone is the same like I know a lot of people that have depression that that are different like the you know the the things that that they struggle with are different um and so that was kind of something to kind of uh that was kind of put in the book to kind of make people think of that i didn't say it very well but i think I, you get what i mean um styron i keep forgetting how to say his name so i keep having to look at the board he also kind of makes the comment about a lot of people in history had what was called melancholy. Mel oh, I knew I was going to say it wrong. Melancholia, melancholia, Melan melancholia. I kind of want to say melancholic, but it's, it's like melancholia. Um, the creative types, you know, lots of kind of people that um, were authors and poets and whatever ended up like killing themselves, and it kind of is quite suggestive of what the mind is like and how it functions that it's probably usual at some point to suffer some kind of mental health issue and that this kind of thing in our society of it, it being something that has stigma attached to it because obviously people used to get put into uh, asylums and things um 
it's kind of not being accepted of the fact that our mind is probably like that and probably does dysfunction at times and we just we kind of are all going to become afflicted by it but we just need to give ourselves time to kind of recover from it um Saren also criticizes the the immediate use of pharmaceuticals because a lot of pharmaceuticals have side effects which then lead to depression so you might take a pharmaceutical to solve depression but then the side effects end up making you more depressed which is why you have to keep up in your dose and stuff like that so often pharmaceuticals are not they're kind of like masking and not dealing with the the underlying problems that have caused you to be depressed in the first place i always think of depression as like a, a trigger a warning sign of a, a kind of something to tell you that your life is not how you want it to be and, and for you to address it and change something you know any kind of times that i've been affected by mental health issues it's been because I'm ignoring something in my life that needs addressing, that I that I know that I am doing something that I, that I shouldn't, as in like I've made a choice that isn't good for me, and I know it's not good for me, but I'm still making I'm still going along with that choice, and then I've ended up like my mind reacts. So this is obviously how it manifests in me. My mind um, will disintegrate, so make me feel like I like I can't um, do my, my everyday life to get distance from it so that I reflect that that's not how I want my life to be so that I make a change uh, so for example before I quit my job I ended up with with very severe mental health issues because I knew that I needed to get out of the situation and the only way that I would make that choice was if I convinced myself that it was making me mentally ill so that I would get out of it when so my mind kind of created that situation so that I would get out of that that not very nice situation for myself so it kind of like manipulated me into making that choice so people's minds work like that sometimes to get them out of it and um, it might manifest differently in you you know a lot of people that i've met with depression don't experience it in the way that i've experienced it so it's just that kind of something to kind of think about when people talk about mental health issues lots of people have them but don't talk about them and you probably wouldn't recognize that they've even had them um you know i've been quite open on this video about like my issues but i've not had these conversations with a lot of people that i know so they'd probably come as quite a surprise to some people that i've uh suffered with that um but for me like i got over it i changed jobs and my mind started to think yeah you've made a good choice now and now you feel better about it and and whatever um so for me it was quite a fixable thing but i think for some people it's enduring and it, it kind of ha you know it, it goes on like, i know people that that say that they've been depressed since they were like 12 um you know i would question why they haven't thought about where that comes from and and make life changes but their depression might be different um so yeah it was an interesting first perspective and i've just ended up talking more about myself in the book but it kind of got me kind of thinking about like my own experience and other people's experiences and and things like that and you know this guy got himself out of it as well so it is possible to overcome it but i think you've got to recognize that your mind is probably going to experience this at some point in your life and that rather than respond to it as it's a this this idea of responding to it as it's an illness and you can't cure it i think is what's probably causing more problems like it's a temporary thing that your mind is doing to protect itself um and you need to kind of learn how to almost tell your mind that you don't need to be protected anymore and that it's kind of like a conversation that you need to have with yourself um i think you know therapists are very good at helping you to have that conversation with yourself if you if you can't like sometimes it's difficult to kind of recognize how your mind is working and how it's functioning in a way that that's it thinks it's protecting you but it's not for example depression is it it, re it reduces your function and it, it removes you from situations so that you don't have to deal with anything um and so you it kind of almost puts you in like a childlike kind of situation like mindset and then you can kind of almost stay there because it's safe and it's comfortable but actually to kind of fight against that and to and to come out of it is what you need to do so by just thinking you've got depression and keeping yourself there you're not doing yourself any favors um so you kind of need to fight to get out of it and and you know this styron guy kind of says that some days there'll be a little bit of light in the dark and eventually the light gets greater the darkness gets gets uh gets less and eventually you go for a full day and it's just all light and i can definitely recognize that like that is what happened to me like i had dark days where had glimmers of light and i used to just kind of 
focus on the positives and focus on the light and eventually I just had a, a days of light so you know it is possible to kind of overcome it um I'm completely ranting but yeah read the book um it was a memoir it wasn't like I think I probably got more out of it than what is actually in there but it's it's a good way of thinking about a depression in a different way and then as well you know if you don't have depression it's a good way of getting some insight into how people that are depressed think um, and so that you can be more empathetic and compassionate with them because this kind of viewpoint of it's your own fault and get yourself out of it kind of thing which I guess I've almost kind of said a little bit haven't I but I guess yeah people are, people have depression because it it's 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 a it's a sane response to an insane situation um, and I think that's kind of some that's kind of a good way to end on on it i think